And hey there, uh, this is a little documentary I put together about making a DIY ribbon microphone. Here I'm using an Apex 415 for the donor. Uh, see the electronics here and the capsule? We're going to get rid of these things. And just use the housing uh, for the ribbon mic. So I've uh, unbolted it, cut all the wires. And uh, so the first thing now, I'm cutting a piece of plexiglass to make what's called the motor. And the motor houses a pair of neodymium magnets and the ribbon. And this is the heart of a ribbon microphone. So uh, here I've drilled a couple of holes into the foot of the motor and I'm just going to test it out to see if it fits in the housing. And it does. Nice fit. Uh, okay, next thing is to drill holes and make a cavity for the magnet and ribbon assembly. And then after I've done the uh, starting holes on my drill press, I go to my Dremel tool and enlarge it. And I'm making a shape here so that there are air holes in beside the magnets. Uh, and then as a final thing, just to, for a perfect fit, I'm using a large mill file and, and filing out the flats. Um, and then I'm going to, here I'm testing the magnet assembly to make sure that's a nice snug fit. And last, uh, I'm just using a three-corner file and I'm just filing notches in the bottom and the top so that the assembly fits nice and snug. You see I've got a piece of quarter-inch plexiglass as a spacer uh, that keeps the uh, magnets exactly a quarter of an inch apart and the, and the fit looks beautiful. Next, I uh, have double stick taped the plexiglass to a piece of plywood and I'm routing ledges on both sides. And drilling through some PC board. Here is the mic transformer. This is a Lundahl microphone transformer made specifically for ribbon mics. And it's a really high ratio. It's something like 1 to 37 step up transformer. Um, and so what do I've got now? Here is the, uh, uh, the magnet. I'm roughing it up getting a surface prepared to epoxy into that plexiglass truss rod. But of course, after roughing it, you know, it, uh, it takes on a lot of iron filings. So the way I get rid of the iron filings is to use a piece of scotch tape uh, and pull the iron filings off. We want these magnets to be dead clean. We don't want any debris or, or filings on there. Now, uh, after, after that, the final step before epoxying, I am going to give it a final cleaning with some isopropanol alcohol before mixing up my favorite epoxy. This is West Systems epoxy. And this is a slow cure. It takes about 24 hours for this epoxy to cure. Uh, but So we'll spread it on to each side of the magnet very thinly and lay the assembly into the plexiglass truss or motor. Uh, and we'll let this dry overnight. So here we are the next day. The epoxy is cured 24 hours. And uh, so now I can take that piece of plexiglass spacer and slip it out. And there we have the finished magnet and truss assembly. So now next step uh, is to install some copper tape. This is uh, sticky on one side. And uh, this, is where, this is where the ribbon will land on and make an electrical connection. Um, the ribbon will live in between these two uh, magnets. Now we move on to making the ribbon. Here I've got a sheet of 0.8 micron aluminum foil. That's really, really thin. And uh, to slice it, I need to use a virgin razor blade. This is a number seven or a number 11 exacto uh, and I can slice it with a really sharp razor. I'm slicing it just a little less than a quarter of an inch so that when the ribbon is laying in the gap it won't touch the magnets on either side. So after I've made the ribbon I sandwich it in between a, a couple of pieces of wax paper and then I it must be corrugated. So I'm running it through my homemade little corrugating machine here. It's just plastic gears that are meshing together. And uh, I'm running it through that. And what the corrugation does is it provides, um, it provides relief for the ribbon so that it can be under some kind of tension but not break as soon as there is sound pressure level. Uh, so now, as you can see, 
Uh, I've got the ribbon. It's corrugated. I'm grabbing it on one end with uh, kind of a, a, a clip. So now laying the ribbon in is quite tricky because I want to lay it in and then center it exactly so that there are gaps on each side. Uh, it cannot touch the magnets. It can't complete an electrical circuit with the magnets. Otherwise, the, uh, the thing won't work at all. And tension is uh, part of the sound of the ribbon microphone. Too loose and it's too boomy, too tight, and it's too um, mid-range honky. So now I've got it clamped in. It's tensioned and uh, done. And I'm just trimming away the excess ribbon material. You can see how fragile it is. Uh, I just basically touch it with the with the exacto, and it it uh, it slices it. So there we are. That is the finished motor assembly of my DIY ribbon microphone. Right. So a uh, couple of things. Final things to do here is just to wire it up. Uh, I'm connecting the motor assembly to uh, the Lundahl transformer and the Lundahl transformer is then connected to the XLR output of the microphone. And the uh, last thing that's left to do here is basically put the housing of the microphone together. Here I'm putting the head basket on and, uh, you know, assembling the body. And next thing we do really is just uh, plug it in and hope it works. That's always the mo one of the most thrilling moments, you know, after doing a, a, a project like this is plugging it in for the first time and hope, hoping it works. And if it does, what is it going to sound like? Well, I bet you're all dying to know what it sounds like, so I'm not going to keep you in suspense any longer. And in fact, you have been listening to this DIY microphone for the entire vid. <laughs>